What up guys, it's Jay here from TV Time with Jay and I am back once again with another review for you guys and this time I am here to review Legacy Season 3 Episode 1 We're Not Worthy. So as per usual with my episode reviews, I'll be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Okay, here it is folks, first TV review of 2021, woo! It's good to be back. Uh, I took a long ass break because uh, there wasn't much TV coming out, so uh, you know, wasn't really much to do in terms of TV time with Jay because there wasn't any uh, TV to be watched. But now that the shows are coming back, I am also making a return, and of course we're gonna come back with the start of Legacies, one of my favorite shows on the CW, and uh, this is the season three premiere. So, basically, we kind of just get uh, one of your standard Malivore Monster of the Week type episodes, but also we kind of get to see the aftermath of like the season finale. You know, Landon being dead, Hope being in a coma, and everybody trying to figure all this shit out. And a lot of this episode deals with guilt and worthiness, as you would probably expect, right? And the main focus of the episode, of course, uh, for a good chunk of it, is Josie. Because as Dark Josie, she wrecked the shop, man. She f just was out here destroying people. She straight up murdered Allison Chang and a bunch of other people as well. And uh, she almost destroyed the entire school. So of course that weighs pretty heavy on Joe as a character. So much so that she's scared of her power now and she's sealed it away. Obviously that's going to be like the Chekhov's gun. She's going to eventually you know, gain her confidence and then get her power back. And uh, we'll once again have to deal with like the merge plot. Because uh, I'm sure that's not going away anytime soon. Uh, but in order to kind of, uh, you know, ease the kids' minds a little bit and to kind of get them back to a sense of normalcy, uh, Rick and MG kind of coordinate this uh, field day where they can just, you know, chill and have fun and be students again. But of course, standard Malivore shenanigans happen once again. Uh, Chad, one of the necromancers, uh, loyal minions, ends up bringing forth Nimue, the lady from the lake, or the lady of the lake from Arthurian legend, uh, into the mix. And we find out that the sword that Wade was casually wielding before, that he stole uh, or borrowed from Dr. Saltzman, wasn't just a regular ass sword, that was fucking Excalibur. The Sword of Selection, the Sword of Kings, the legendary sword of King Arthur himself. And uh, with Nimue being here, Nimue also attracts forth the Green Knight, which I guess in this version is a corrupted kind of uh, evil knight who apparently brought forth the end of Camelot and the Dark Ages, which in... You know, regular Arthurian mythology, the Green Knight had nothing to do with that. It was actually Mordred, and it's the whole thing. But, you know, Legacies has their right to their own interpretation. It's fine. Whatever. I'm not going to be a nerd and nitpick it. But, yeah. So, basically, uh, what's left of the Super Squad has to figure out how to deal with the Green Knight and basically save everybody. Um, now, Nimue is being super cryptic. She's like, all right, what you need to do, you need to use Excalibur and defeat the Green Knight because they find out the hard way that no normal attacks will work on the Green Knight. Only Excalibur can damage him. And uh, he's walking super slow thanks to a curse Nimoy put on him. But if he's able to wield Excalibur again, uh, it just means the end of day is for everybody. So, of course... You know, they have to stop him. Now, they get into this whole debate over who is worthy or not. And Lizzie is, you know, being Lizzie and 
goes a bit too far when uh, attacking Allison Chang about her bitchy treatment of Josie because, you know, Josie kills her, so she's got a lot of salt and animosity there. So she's being a bitch to Josie. Lizzie ain't having that, and so Lizzie went straight for her throat. Not literally. She didn't, like, actually, like, rip her throat out, like, werewolf style, but, like, in terms of, like, mean girl, like, rip out her throat as in, like, isolate her socially and, uh, you know, make everybody just not trust or like her. And so, of course, this makes Allison just say, nah, fuck this shit, I'm out. She's like, you know what, if y'all think I'm a monster, I'll just be team monster. So she ends up siding with the necromancer, uh, which, by the way, leads into our B-plot. Our B-plot uh, actually, I think, is much more important than the A-plot, which is the whole uh, Green Knight thing. But the B-plot has to do with the necromancer having land and soul, but land and soul refusing to return to his body and resurrect because Landon feels like if I come back, that means Malivore can later use me as a vessel and then end everybody that I care about. If I stay dead, then there's no way Malivore can win and I get to protect everybody. But here's the thing. Hope went into a coma so that she would not have to deal with the trauma of Landon's death and she didn't have to grieve all over again because she knew this was going to be permanent um and it's definitely selfish but it's on brand for Hope Michelson for sure uh and I'm not gonna lie it's really sweet it almost reminds me of like a once upon a time style coma and Raph basically you know breaks it down to him he goes I know this is the hero move but look dude not only do I need you, but Hope needs you, and the world needs Hope Michelson. She's waiting for you. If you don't come back, she doesn't come back, and we need her. Everyone needs her. So please, get in your fucking body. Uh, obviously, Raph doesn't say those exact words, but that's basically how he puts it. And so, eventually, you know, Landon coalesces and decides to you know, jump back into his body, he reunites with Hope, they have a really sweet moment, and then Raph comes in and saves the day, because it turns out, Raph is a descendant of motherfucking King Arthur. He pulls out Excalibur and defeats the Green Knight. I'll admit, yes, that was a little rushed, and I feel like we, we, we kind of just glossed over that. But if this means my boy Raphael gets more major play this season, I am down for it. Raphael was kind of relegated to a, a background character a little bit uh, in season two. So I'm really hoping that Raphael uh, gets more of an active role in season three. It seems like it. I hope that Arthurian blood comes into play because, you know, Merlin is a big thing in Arthurian legend. So maybe Merlin will come around. I, I don't know. I think this would be really fucking awesome. I cannot wait to see. I hope more Arthurian legend comes into play because of uh, Raph's new established connection. That's pretty dope. Um, we see at the end of the episode that Chad, one of the necromancer's minions, uh, ends up expiring. And so, out of fear of you know reaching the same fate, Allison fully aligns herself with the necromancer. And now she's fully on Team Monster. So, it looks like for now, at least in this beginning, we're going to get, like, the Malivore of uh, the week episode. Especially because I think they had already said in the beginning that this was just uh, the first few episodes are going to kind of be what we would have gotten for the rest of uh, Season 2 if it wasn't cut short thanks to coronavirus. So... You know, I'm going to give this first uh, small chunk of episode to pass because it's not the official, official start of season three. It's a more like 2.5. But 
regardless, still a fun episode. I still enjoyed uh, this one for what it is. It brought some new things to the table. Uh, some solid action. Really good stuff from MG. Proven his leadership skills. And um, I loved the little Mizzy moment. I thought that was really sweet. And I think, you know, Josie spending time with Caroline and, uh, you know, figuring her own stuff out by herself will be good for her. And I can't wait to see, you know, where that leads. Overall, I thought this was a really good episode, but let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I will be reviewing Legacies every single week, uh, pretty much until the season is over. I will also be reviewing a bunch of other uh, CW shows like the Arrowverse stuff and a bunch of other great TV shows as well. So if you like TV, this is definitely the place to be. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Like I said, uh, links to my Twitter and Twitch are in the description down below if you want to watch me have fun and play video games and just interact with me uh, just more personally and casually, Twitch is the best place to go. If you want to live tweet with me as I uh, watch these different TV shows before I post my reviews, uh, Twitter is the best place to follow me, so definitely check those links out. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and uh, like I always say, once a TV fan, always a TV fan, and once a Legacies fan, always a Legacies fan, now I compel you to hit that subscribe button and notification bell, and don't forget to leave a like as well. But until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.